What's up, everyone? Kevin Allen here from DFS Army, and this is your DraftKings NFL Week 2 first look lineup. We're going to go through the DraftKings salaries, positions. We're going to talk about what happened in Week 1, some takeaways, and we'll put together what is a first look lineup for NFL Week 2. Um, obviously, before we get in there, I have to uh, shout out some of the big winners from DFS Army this past weekend. Um, no nays, really impressive takedown in the mini max. Now it's only a thousand bucks. You're like, ah, whatever. But that's a massive contest using the domination station optimizer. It takes the same run to win any kind of giant tournament sliders coming in 12th place in the Millie maker on DraftKings as well. And note that sliders used a stack with, um, Baker Mayfield and Chris Godwin to get there. One of the big wins, I think, this weekend, if you watch some of our content, was Burns out here pushing Baker Mayfield double stacks with Evans and um, and Godwin, which ended up being the nuts. So well done to everybody for all the big winners in NFL Week 1. We're going to keep it going. We're going to keep it going for NFL Week 2. We're going to produce a lot of big wins once again, I'm sure. Now, one more thing I wanted to mention. I know some of you out there are having trouble with your optimizer, your optimizer company. Those of you who aren't subscribed to DFS Army, you might be having some issues out there. I know that uh, you know some of the optimizer companies having some trouble. Well, we have your back here at DFS Army. So if you are having some issues, you want to check out a new place, you've been enjoying these videos, the content, but you're like, hey, I've been doing my stuff somewhere else. We want you to check us out. So Special for NFL Week 2 only, promo code CRUNCH gets you uh, a week of DFS Army NFL full coverage, optimizer, projections, ownerships, everything that we do, the cheat sheets, burns, the Millie Maker, Shark Lab breakdowns, all that stuff, 10 bucks for the week. Go to DFSArmy.com, use promo code CRUNCH. Is it CRUNCH? Did I get that right? Yeah, promo code CRUNCH. Gets you a week of NFL for just 10 bucks to check us out. So you've been asking, hey, I want to check it out, see if I like it. NFL week one, promo code CRUNCH gets you a week of DFS Army NFL full coverage for just 10 bucks. If you like it, stick around. If not, cancel. But the Domination Station Optimizer is producing winners. So you want to check it out. And a full week will give you enough time to check out what we have going on. All right. Let's take a look at NFL week one, and we're going to start with the game tiles and just kind of go through what games are popping. And I'll see if I can kind of throw in a little bit of information we learned from week one along the way here with some of these breakdowns. So um, first game, you got Seattle at the Patriots, 38 point total. That's gross. Um, didn't see much out of the Patriots to get me excited uh, this past week and Seattle, not so much either, but you know, um, this is just an ugly game to target. Next up, we have the Ravens at home taking on the Raiders. Raiders did not look good in week one. They looked off their game. We don't want to take too much away from offenses looking out of sync in week one. They're rusty. It takes a couple games to get back into it. So I don't want to overjudge, but I'm a little nervous about the prospects for Delonte Adams if things don't improve with the Raiders. And Zamir White did not look good either. Again, that could just be week one stuff. So we'll see. Um, as far as the Ravens go, though, that's not a team that I like to target as a heavy favorite. They tend to lean on the run when they're ahead, which means Derrick Henry season. So I'm going to be looking to get away from Lamar Jackson and very interested in Derrick Henry for NFL Week 2 on the Ravens. Um, next up, we've got the Browns at Jacksonville. And, um, you know, again, Browns did not look good. Deshaun Watson, I don't know if it's rusty or he just sucks now. And I've been saying it for the whole offseason. Like, there is a chance that Deshaun Watson is just terrible. And he's lost it. We're going to find out in the next few weeks. But he needs to turn it around. It looked ugly. Of course, Dallas is a really good defense. They make a lot of teams look bad. So we'll see if that if that happens at Jacksonville. I think we, we're, we're, we, we need to get worried. Um, Jets at Tennessee. This is a Jets defense smash spot against the Titans team led by Will Levis. He's just not that good. And, um, you know... Bears defense dominated this team last week, and I think Jets defense will dominate them here. Jets defense in play, Brees Hall in play. All the Jets players bounce back after a rough road game at San Francisco. People will overjudge them as being worse than what truly did happen. I am looking to make a bet on the Jets as well. Saints at Dallas. Dallas is at home. Dallas defense is always in play. 
especially in a home game. Uh, I think this is a game where Dallas will just um, smash the uh, Saints and, and, you know, maybe CeeDee Lamb comes back into relevance here. Uh, Dallas's team total is 26, which is really, really good for the slate. Giants at Washington. I know I said that I was interested in Danny Jones as a Millie maker silly for the Millie play in week one. And obviously that didn't work out. You'd think I'd slink away from that. You'd think I'd be scared to go out and kind of mention that again. But I'm not going right back to it. Love the pain. Love the suffering. Going back to it. Um, but uh, yeah, the Giants have traditionally, like Jones has a really good history against Washington, but I also like Jaden Daniels. He's popping. Um, you know, he, I, my notes on Jaden Daniels, got to see this note. <laughs> Wait, when I rewatch the game, <laughs> poised. Grown ass man, very quick to run fantasy gold. That's my notes for Jaden Daniels from week one. More of the same coming here against the Giants. I really like this game, even with a low total um, in terms of the fantasy production potential. Uh, biggest team total on the slate is the Lions here taking on the Bucks as heavy favorites at home. So we have all of the lines in play. I'm in rock coming off a bad week. Jamison Williams crushing it last week. And both running backs did well. Laporta kind of, uh, you know, nondescript week last week. You never know which one of them is going to pop, though. A lot of um, weapons on the Lions. So it's going to be tough to pick week to week which one. But I think Amon Ra, stud off a dud might be interesting. Colts at the Packers. I'm very excited about Colts defense in this one, taking on a Packers team that will be without Jordan Love. All of the Packers wide receivers are no bueno this week. Just forget it. Not interested. Colt side, we have to really see what Anthony Richardson looks like in a game where his team's favored. And maybe this is a, you know, uh, Jonathan Taylor game. Colt should dominate defensively and with the run. Not going to need to do a ton um, with the arm, but that doesn't mean they won't do anything with the arm. It just means they don't need to. Um, Chargers at the Panthers. Panthers stink. You could play even Chargers defense here. Bryce Young, the experiment is going bad. Who knows how long, how much longer his leash will be? Probably this whole season, but he looked putrid on the road last week. Let's see if he looks better at home. Of course, again, we don't want to judge too harshly. Week one, teams are a little bit out of sync, but if by week three, four, five, this is still going on, I think he's going to potentially get benched. And um, on the Charger side, uh, J.K. Dobbins, are, is it for real? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, but the Chargers should be able to um, win that game and win it in, um, in uh, let's call it, uh, you know, in, in, in good fashion. I don't know what I'm saying. All right, 49ers at the Vikings, 45-point total. 49ers, um, Jordan Mason is a beast if he is going to start for Christian McCaffrey at his price. He's a lock button all in play this week. If he starts, I'm going to be treating the first look lineup as if he is starting because it's more fun to build it that way. And if he doesn't, whatever, we could switch to Dobbins or we'll switch it around. It doesn't matter. It's first look. Now, this game's really interesting. Rams at the uh, Cardinals. A, because the Rams are underdogs. What? Really? I would think they'd be favored here. But also, monster total, very close game. I love everything about this game. Both sides, core plays everywhere in this one, especially on the Ram side between Kyron Williams, Cooper Cup, and even Demarcus Robinson and Colby Parkinson. Everything about the Rams I like, and I got to think about what pieces from the Cardinals to bring back, but this is that game that it's the only game. This one is probably the only game stackable game that I'm seeing for, and right now, that's the only one that stands out to me for game stacks, right? So I'm excited about that one, and that could be a little back and forth, little little excitement. So we're going to focus on a lot of the players, especially from the Ram side, but I think the money might be made just picking the right Cardinal. Steelers at the Browns, at the Broncos. You know, Justin Fields looked pretty good out there last week, and even though he didn't put up a big score, didn't get the touchdowns, I liked what I saw. Um, it looks like they will start Fields again, and even with this low total, and even with the shitty, shitty game, uh, I think the Steelers' defense will dominate, uh, dominate Bo Nix, who Looks like a rookie out there. Looks good. I like him, but looks like a rookie out there. And um, I think maybe we can get a little bit of fantasy production from Justin Fields here. Not sure. Not my top play, but I'm interested. Finally, we have the Bengals at the Chiefs. The Chiefs are uh, favored at home here with a 26 and three quarter point team total. 
And there are pieces on the Chiefs that we're going to be interested in um, as well. Loved the breakout for Xavier Worthy uh, in, in week one. Didn't see much out of Travis Kelsey. Are we going to see much from him all season, or is he going to wait for the playoffs? I don't know. He looked weird with the new haircut and everything. So let's call him Travis Haircut Kelsey. T-Swizz cutting his hair, making him look a little odd. What are you going to do? You know what else looked odd in week one? The Giants uniforms. Oh, I hope that was a one-week thing. That was, Those were horrible on the eyes. I don't know what they were thinking. No wonder they played terrible. Those hockey uniforms. What the heck were they thinking? All right. NFL week one QB position reminder, hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy these videos, we got FanDuel, DraftKings uh, content. We've got the showdown breakdowns, tournament tactics, all the content coming out here on the DFSR YouTube channel. And of course, if you want a week of NFL VIP, NF, just NFL all access at DFS army promo code crunch gets you 10, uh, gets you the week for $10. And of course, that includes our Domination Station Optimizer, which I just had up on the screen. The best and most flexible optimizer in the business. It leads to wins. Where is it? Where's my win screenshot? Optimizer first place was, what is this? Uh, afternoon only? Oh, that was the showdown. Yeah, crush the showdowns. Um, all right. Let's go. Taking a look at the quarterback position starting at the top. I already said, Lamar, not really for me. Uh, Mahomes also a little expensive for me here. Mahomes is like, 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 uh, what do they call fool's gold? What's the name of that substance? Pyrite. You're always excited for Mahomes and he just disappoints more often than not. Um, that probably means he'll have a big game this week. I mean, he, he's got 30 points in him at any time, but I do think the Bengals need to show some, some life here in order for uh, Mahomes to reach his ceiling. Uh, Richardson, big week last week was my core quarterback play all week long. I was like, I identified Richardson in like July as the core play for week one. It paid off. He put up a 27. That's what you want at 6K. That's uh, almost uh, five, five X, almost five X his salary, which is great. Can you do it again? Sure. I think Richardson is playable every single week. Dak Prescott at home, you know, nondescript spot. This is one of those spots where Prescott can just blow up. Um, similarly, K Kyler Murray, uh, as much as I, uh, I think he's probably the best quarterback in this game to target. So that's fine. I don't, I don't love it, but you know, Murray's okay. I probably like him and maybe the tight end or some, some combination like that. Jared Goff is always getting potentially vultured by his running backs. They're so good. So you never know when Goff is going to get you a big game. Burrow, Burrow starts slow row. Joe slow row start slow row i don't know I'll, I'll work on that but joe burrow always seems to start slow this season is no different so i think we need to give him a couple more weeks to get his shit figured out but this is a good spot for joe burrow to bounce back and have a good game you know we'll see if it happens my play though this week is going to be Jaden daniels um, quarterback Washington commanders. I just think um, I liked what I saw to him again. Notes said grown ass, man. That's the kind of shit I write down when I'm watching these games, just to like remind myself of what's going on, but he was quick to run. I liked, I liked the way he looked out there. He seemed poised and he's taking on a giants team. That's absolute dog shit. So um, I actually think the giants might even be competitive, which is even better for Jaden Daniels. So for all those reasons, Jaden Daniels popping for me as the top value uh, at quarterback for NFL week one. And, you know, by, you know, um, the optimizer agrees, right? It loves Jaden Daniels. And like I said, scary second guy, Daniel Jones, yikes. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, if I'm not playing a uh, Daniels, let's just kind of go through the rest of these names. Brock Purdy, always fine. Uh, Matthew Stafford rarely gets uh, a ceiling type game, but this is a decent spot for him. Mayfield, I mean, chasing last week's big game doesn't feel like the right kind of thing to do, but he certainly had a very, very good game. Even ran the ball a couple times. Baker. Baker was out there with the swagger. It's kind of an old quarterback now, I guess, but I, like, I get the sense that he's old, but he was out there with that swagger, so I like what I'm seeing from Baker. Aaron Rodgers, never playable in fantasy. Justin Herbert, probably not somebody to be interested in fantasy either. Just cross these guys off your list. Lawrence also, eh, not exciting. Deshaun Watson, got to prove it to me before I'll ever trust him again. Um, Gino on the road, meh. Uh, Fields, okay. 
I think I'm going to have a really small player pool this week. Like I'll play some fields. I'll play some Derek, uh, some, some uh, Daniel Jones, silly for the Millie. I don't really like anything going on down here at all. So I'm going to have a really small player pool. Maybe, um, you know, maybe mix in, you know, some Kyler Murray and, and whatnot. But uh, I'm, ex uh, I'm excited to just kind of load up on a couple names and see how that works out for NFL week two. All right, let's move on to the running back position. And um, Christian McCaffrey got the Q tag, may not play. I'm going to assume it, he doesn't play. I'm just going to scroll down and plug in core play. Jordan Mason, who is coming off 28 carries, only one target reception, but 25 fantasy points. This is a San Francisco team that produces well to the running back position. So if they're going to start Jordan Mason and he's going to be 5,200 on DraftKings and even cheaper on FanDuel, relatively speaking, we're just going to play him. Take the free value, move on. Um, but looking at the rest of the running back position for NFL week two. Um, Jonathan Taylor, great matchup. I like pairing him up with his defense. Brees Hall, same thing, like pairing him up with Jets defense here. Going to smash the Titans and their shitty, shitty, um, uh, you know, offense. Jets should have the ball in good spots in this game. Same with Taylor. You know, I don't know which guy outscores the other one, but both of these guys are really interesting plays for NFL week one. Um, Travis Etienne, eh. Not exciting. Kamara on the road, not a play I'm going to get excited about. Um, Pacheco, 6,900. A little expensive for Pacheco, but we know he's going to get all the work, so that's a good spot. Kyron Williams, also a good spot at 6,800. You know, some of the offseason negativity about Kyron Williams, I was like, what are you guys talking about? And and it turns true. Now, um, Sean McVay is saying he does want to mix in some of the other guys and, you know, lighten up his workload, but, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. Another name I like a lot this week is going to be Derrick Henry. Um, didn't put up a score that was super exciting last week. But now he gets a better matchup where R Ravens defense is in play. They're massive favorites. And that's when Derrick Henry's time to shine should happen. So I could see Derrick with over 100 yards and two touchdowns in this game. Let's not ignore him. Jameer Gibbs, always good, but sketchy, high floor, high ceiling, or low floor, high ceiling kind of guy. Josh Jacobs, no. James Conner, yes, right? James Conner, always, he's just getting it done. Four target, three receptions last week, 16, carries 50 yards, gets a touchdown, scores a yeoman-like 19.3 fantasy points. Uh, he has been spectacular in games when Kyler Murray is on the team. No reason to expect otherwise, and I just think he's going to keep it going, so... Yeah, I'll have some interest in Connor. Walker is fine. Rashad White, you know, as an underdog on the road, less good than usual. Aaron Jones didn't get as much work as I would have liked, but he still put, produced a pretty decent score. I'd like to see him catching more passes and just more involved even than he has been. Um, flip side, Ramondre Stevenson. What a day. That was unexpected. New England coming out with the big win. Um can they do it again against against uh, Seattle? Uh, you know, maybe. I say yes. I say yes. They could do it again, and I think Stevenson is going to be live. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to plug in a Brees Lightning as my RB2. Um, just to kind of want a couple other names, though, that I'm interested in. Uh, Gerald Ford, Jerome Ford, not Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford's the president. I think from like the... The, the early 70s that took over for Dick Nixon. It's before my time. I'm not that old. But Jerome Ford, in a losing effort last week against Dallas, seven targets, six receptions, bunch of carries. He's the lead back on a team that wants to run the football and wants to score through the run. I'm excited for Jerome Ford this week. I think he's in play. Not a very good, like actual real life necessarily running back but good enough. Um, all right. Eckler, no. Singletary, probably not. Zamir White, no. And a brutal matchup. Moss, same deal. Tough matchup. Najee Harris, maybe. Najee freaking Harris. Look at this volume. 20 carries, 70 yards, a um, couple targets. Didn't do much with it, but the whole team didn't score and was shit last week, so whatever. He's not somebody I'm going to go crazy on. But Najee Harris is going to be in my player pool. Um, 
Jalen Warren barely got any work. Now, here's the thing. Does this mean that Najee Harris is going to be this workhorse and Jalen Warren is now relegated to sort of, you know, meh? I don't think so. I think what's going on here is Warren had been injured in the preseason, didn't play a ton, wasn't sure if he was going to play week one. And as it then it turned out, he didn't, they just didn't play him much. And it could have been just because he was coming off injury. And I think they will increase his work each week as things go on. So let's not overreact with Harris and Warren week one. Just let's not overreact. Final name I want to mention, J.K. Dobbins. He had a smash game and now gets a spectacular matchup with Carolina. I have no problem putting my line. Now, here's the thing. People don't realize that he and Gus Edwards got about the same amount of work last week. It was just Dobbins was much more effective. Now, that could have been just blind luck, or it could be he's just better. We'll find out. I think it's probably more variance than it was like Dobbins being that different of a player than Gus Edwards. And I think it might be hopium to expect that Dobbins will get like a lot more work than he got week one. And if he's only getting 10 carries and three targets, that's going to be tough to, to deliver value against 5,400. But if they do kind of increase his workload and say, hey, this guy looks like the part and he's got the fresh legs, then 5,400 in this matchup against a dead Panthers team is going to be really, really good. So if it wasn't for Mason, you know, Dobbins is is very viable as a pay down option and uh, certainly a viable replacement for Ford here if we want to pay down. And I, I would also say, listen, there's a lot of reason to not pay down at running back this week and just pay up for Derrick Henry or one of these other names, Kyron Williams, all really, really good, or, or Jonathan Taylor, like, Running back is stacked for NFL Week 2, especially if Mason plays. Let's talk about defenses before we get to the pass catchers. There are three or four defenses that are popping like crazy in my model this week, and I just want to point them out. Like, early week. To understand, we're going to be clicking these defenses time and time and time again. So, the first one is going to be the Colts for 3,300. And again, very simple. They're taking on a Packers team that's going to be starting Malik Willis, probably. Malik Willis is terrible. So um, that is not a good scene for that Chargers team. And therefore, that is a good scene for us to play that defense. But there are more. There's a bunch of them that really, really pop for me in terms of uh, excellent plays. So let's take a look. We'll continue scrolling here. Now, I really want to target like the smash spots. Steelers at Denver. Bo Nix looking like a rookie out there. Steelers defense, crazy good. They dominated last week. They can dominate again here. So I don't mind Steelers. I don't mind Chargers here against the Carolina team. That is also terrible. Uh, Bryce Young, not very good. And uh, the Jets on the road also very much in play against the Titans team with Will Levis. So we want to target inexperienced quarterbacks with our defenses, and there are plenty to choose from. But the best of them to me is definitely going to be the Colts because Malik Willis is just hashtag not that good. All right, let's take a look at the wide receiver position now for NFL Week 2. And um, reminder again, if you're if you're not signed up at DFS Army, you get a week of NFL DFS with promo code Crunch for ten bucks for the week to check it out. Consider it a, a, a sample run. Go to DFSArmy.com and get signed up. Promo code Crunch ten dollars for a weekly subscription for your first week to check it out. Um, okay. Wide receiver group. Let's just start with core play. I mean, we're playing Cooper Cup. Let's be real. I might play Cooper Cup in 100% of my lineups this week. With no Puka Nakua, I'm playing Cooper Cup. It's that simple. Don't like it. Catch me outside. How about that? No, seriously, you're doing it too. It's very obvious. Mason and Cooper Cup are core plays. It, uh, if Mason starts and Cooper Cup is already locked in as my core play at wide and everybody's core play. It might get so high of ownership that we might have to actually just be like, can't play him because he's too high owned, but I just want to play. But um, the other Rams wide receivers are going to be really interesting as well as are all of the 
Arizona wide receivers. So let's keep that game in mind. There are ways to get different, even with Cooper Cup in your lineup. But if we're going to look at other stud wide receivers, you know, Justin Jefferson, yeah, let's go right back to that. He's at home. He's going to smash in this game. CeeDee Lamb also going to smash. No worries. CeeDee Lamb's awesome. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown coming off a dud, stud off a dud, also really good spot. All of the studs are in a good spot. I don't have a problem with Lamb, Jefferson, great. Amon Ross, sure, why not? Uh, Chase, not, not the biggest game last week, but he caught everything that threw at him and almost had a big game. If Joe Burrow starts to look a little better, he will have a big game, right? Mike Evans, two touchdowns, um, 23 fantasy points, smashed last week. Evans does that. Evans is one of the players that 4X is at one of the highest rates of any player in the NFL. I love him for 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 um, for DFS. Devontae Adams coming off the dud. You know, he looked good out there. It's just his quarterback just couldn't get him the ball. So will that change? I don't know. Everybody's pretty good here. Even Garrett Wilson um, should be fine. Now, I don't really justify Mar Marvin Harrison Jr. at this price, um, so I'd probably stay away. Debo is one of the players that benefits a little bit from... Um, McCaffrey not being in the game because they start to use him much more as a running back. So he's fine as well. I'm really curious to see if the Chiefs um, activate Hollywood Brown. If not, I think we go right back to Rice and Xavier Worthy without too much concern. Um, I like them both. Mari Cooper is one of these guys, uh, you know, nine targets, two receptions. What if he caught some of those targets last week? We'd be talking different about Amari Cooper. So uh, again, for tournaments, I'm keeping Amari Cooper in mind. This is very much a maybe Deshaun Watson isn't washed kind of a play. Um, continuing on down the line here, Chris Godwin cannot ignore the targets, the efficiency. Everything about it was really, really good last week. He's in the slot. I like Chris Godwin. We could plug him right into our first look lineup. But I have to say, for our mid-salary wide receiver, there's a few others that are certainly were worthy of consideration. Xavier Worthy being one of them. Malik Neighbors is okay. Uh, let's see, Malik Neighbors, seven targets, five receptions. You know, a better game out of uh, Danny Dimes. If he starts tossing some dimes, which I think he might, um, this could be a big one for Neighbors. But I might save him for my Jones lineups. Pickens, tough matchup. He's going to go up against Pat Sertain. Um, but he is the top target, and he was catching bombs from Russell Wilson. Uh, not Russell Wilson. For, see, like now you're going to all now you're going to all type in the in the um, in the chat. Who doesn't even know that Justin Fields played? He said Russell Wilson. Please type that. Yeah. No, I totally didn't know that Justin Fields played. Yeah, I said Russell Wilson, and that means I'm I don't watch football. That must be what it is. All right. Sorry. Side note. Yeah, but um, Fields to Pickens look really good. It's a tough matchup, but I'm going to keep keep it in mind. Um, another one. Listen, since we have Jaden Daniels, I think the best play is probably Terry McLaurin. Scary Terry. It is a little scary, though, that Terry wasn't targeted very often last week. Like, who are they even throwing to? I don't know. Can Jaden Daniels throw it? Eh, didn't see a whole lot of that being successful week one, but I think Terry McLaurin is more tournament only in stacks with Jaden Daniels, but I'm not ready to sort of um, declare it a safe play. It's unsafe. It's scary. Um, let's see. We have 4,200 average remaining, so we can't actually just straight pay up for players here, but if there's somebody we like more than Godwin, we can plug them in. Um, Mike Williams, no. Ugh, gross, right? Brandon Cooks, okay, acceptable. Uh, Christian Kirk, man, he disappointed a lot of people as chalk last week. One one reception, four targets, gross. But the name that I really loved, and he looked like the real deal, Jamo, Jameson Williams, nine targets, five, just he looked amazing. He looked like a grown-ass man too. He's out there looking like fucking Jaden Daniels, grown-ass man. Didn't seem skinny. Has he gained weight? I don't know what's going on with Jameson Williams, but he looked transformed to me as a player. I am about it. So I don't mind JMO. I don't like the chasing of last week's big score, but I, I don't mind it. We can go a little differently. If we want to pay up a tight end, we can punt down to Demarcus Robinson or one of the um, Arizona or Rams other wide receiver. Ty Johnson is the other wide receiver from the Rams. I got a ton of looks. 
and then we could pay up at tight end in a lineup like this, or we could put in Jamison and then play my favorite pay down tight end option on this slate, Mr. Colby Parkinson, who caught uh, four or five targets. He's 3K. He doesn't burn you, even if he has a shitty day. You know, it's not going to ruin your day in DFS, and he could pop for a touchdown and have a really, really good day. Um, just a real quick run through of the tight end position before we lock in the early uh, lineup of the week here. You know, Laporta can get it done at any time, but we saw last week, like when the, you know, when you pay up a tight end and they kind of give you a floor game, it, it kind of ruins your lineup. So, you know, that's only for tournaments and in, in any sort of cash environment, I really want to pay down at tight end uh, to the, you know, and just, you know, lock in seven, eight, 12 points with someone like Parkinson and just get my scoring elsewhere. So I think Parkinson will remain my cash game tight end for sure in NFL week two, but in tournaments, it's okay to pay up for some of these guys. Travis Kelsey at 6,200. Is this the cheapest he's ever been? I, I, oh, we can't see last season, but I mean, this is really cheap for Travis Kelsey, really cheap. And then of course you got to love McBride in the game of the week against Arizona. So I don't, uh, against the Rams, Arizona and the Rams. So we have the Rams guy, but if I wanted to switch it up, I would just go McBride and then I might swap in, swap down from Williams to, oh, let me show you the other version. So if I wanted to play McBride, and I, I like Treasy McBreezy, I bring him in, and then we probably have to um, go down to Tyler Johnson. Oh, I couldn't quite get it done. Couldn't quite. Tyler Johnson, Tyler. 3,300. We almost got it, right? It's close. But that would kind of be the type of shift we would need to do in order to make this work. All right, let me go back to what I had because I don't want to mess up this lineup. I had spent so much time and effort crafting. Um, where were we? Oh, yeah, tight end. Other names. Yeah, McBride is fine. Uh, Evan Ingram burned everybody last week. Go right back to it, though. It's fine, but just know the floor is low, and if he doesn't you know, catch a bunch of targets, he's going to burn us. So throw a little bit of like here, let me let me put it like this players on established teams that they've been on for a long time in an established role like evan ingram even though week one it didn't work out for him we saw last season that evan ingram was a player that averaged between six to ten targets every day averaged about eight targets per week that is spectacular for his price point so i'm not going to get scurred off off of one rough week. I think the team was a little rusty. It's week one. And when they get in the flow of things, you're going to see the big games from Evan Ingram. Um, but the name that everybody's talking about this week is Isaiah likely 12 targets. What? Nine receptions. What? The nuts captain on the showdown. Are you kidding me? That's wild. We got to go right back to it. Like, I don't know. They're using him as a wide receiver. He seems like the best wide receiver on the team. He's big. Um, they didn't throw it to Andrews at all. It was all likely. Will it happen again? I don't know. But likely is definitely somebody I am going to be using heavily. And then, of course, Mark Andrews would be like the contrarian pivot. What if it's Andrews? And every, all the likely people get burned. All that's the psychology of tournaments that we'll be talking through on tournament tactics. Every Friday here on the DF Summer YouTube channel, Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern, Burns, The Shark Lab, Bobby Wow, a.k.a. Bobby Millions, Josiah, The Gilf, The Gilf Man, and of course, The Comic Relief, me. Fridays at 5 p.m., hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, smash the notification bell so you know we're going live. You could be in the chat with us live. Remember, promo code CRUNCH gets you a week of NFL for just $10. That's basically a cup of coffee. Attack those mini maxes. Make 150, 300 lineups at the push of a button with the Domination Station Optimizer. It's the best way to dominate the competition. Gonna crush the comp. Make them look like bitches. Let's go. I'll see you guys next time. Good luck.